Hello friends, it's Iskan Alpar here and in this Godot tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a top-down shooter from scratch. We're going to create a player, we're going to create some enemies, we're going to be able to shoot the enemies using a raycast and I'm also going to show you a bunch of other cool stuff as well. So there's a lot to do in this one, let's get to work. Okay, so the step one of our game here is going to be creating a new project. So let's go ahead and give it a very creative name, which is going to be top down demo. I know I'm very creative. So let's also find a folder for this. For me, it's going to be in the desktop. Let's see inside of my documents, Godot version four. And in here, I am going to create a new folder, which is going to be top down demo. Let's say YouTube top down demo, because I'm making this for YouTube. And besides that, we're not going to create a folder. We can just leave it as is and create it. So come on, you can do it. First step is going to be creating the main game scene that everything is going to take um, part in. We can call this the world. We can call this level one. We can call it anything we want. In this case, I'm just going to call this world actually, because maybe in this game, there's like one big giant open world that everything takes place in. So to save this, we're going to create a new folder called scenes. Let's also create a folder called scripts and also one called assets. Let's save this scene by hitting control S inside of the scenes folder, just like that. And the first thing I want to do here is I want to create the background, which is going to be a green colored rectangle just to represent some grass, like a foresty grass background. To do that, we could create a sprite and give it a tint, but we can also create a mesh instance 2D. And that way we don't need to use a texture. We can simply go into the mesh here, create a quad. And a quad is like this, so you can make it larger. It's white by default. I'm going to make it very large. I'm going to put it like that. And then I'm going to go into the visibility, modulate, and turn this into green. Like that, and I'm going to make it dark. Maybe even darker, less color, just like that. I think that's going to make a nice background. I'm also going to click on this lock icon here so that I don't accidentally click on it. As you can see, I'm not able to click on it because it's locked. Perfect. So let's run the game by hitting this. It's going to ask us to pick a main scene, which is going to be this one. So we can simply say select current. And we're just going to get this green background. Perfect. So the next step, I want to bring in the assets that I'm going to use for this. So I am prepared some textures and some sound effects that I'm just going to drag into Godot. The textures I drew myself a while ago for a game that I made for a game jam. So I'm just going to give these to you guys for free. Um, but the sound effects I'm not going to be able to because I didn't make these. Okay, we might not use them anyways. Uh, we'll see. So okay, so that's the assets we have. We have a zombie, we have a top down character, we have a gun, we have a bullet, which we're probably not going to use. And we have my masterpiece, the box. <laughs> so, um, okay, so first of all, let's actually make the box because that's going to be the simplest thing that we're going to create in this game. So let's create a new scene. Let's make this a static body. Let's give this a sprite. By the way, I'm hitting control A to open up the create new node dialog here. You can also just click on this plus here, which is going to do the same thing. And in here, I'm going to look for a collision shape 2D. And you can also like only type in C shape and that's going to find collision shape. You don't have to type in the whole name, which is also kind of cool. Let's also create this. For the sprite, we're going to give it the box. Let's also rename this to be the box. Also save it into the scenes folder. 
Let's give it the sprite, the box. And by default, it's going to be too small. And also the pixel art is kind of blurred, as you can see. So to fix it, we're going to go into texture. We're going to go into the filter and set it to be nearest. And that's going to make the pixel art nice and crispy. There is a setting that we can change here, I think, which is like, where is it? Rendering textures, default texture filter, and we can set this to be nearest. And that will do it, I, I believe. But I think we had to do it before we imported the textures. Not sure. Whatever. So that's the box, but it's going to be too small for this game. So we either have to, let's actually create a box here. So click on the world, click on the instance button and just select the box. And as you can see, it's tiny compared to how large the window is. So we're going to have to either, let's see, I'm just going to make everything larger. So that's going to be my solution. So I'm just going to take the sprite here, go into the transform and scale it by three so that it's much bigger. And then we're going to create the collision shape. And guess what? This is going to be a rectangle. So let's hold the edge here, hold down Alt as well so that we can scale it from the center. I'm going to make it just like that. Perfect. So let's save that. Let's go back into the world and let's maybe place down a couple of these. So while I have the box selected, I can just hit Control D and that's going to duplicate it and then I can just move it. And by the way, I'm using the move tool here, which I can go into by hitting W. I was just using the select mode, which is Q. So I can switch between these using the shortcut. And when I'm in the move mode, I can just move stuff by clicking anywhere as long as I have it selected in the scene here. So yeah, just gonna create a couple more, just like that. Perfect, let's take a look at that. Obviously we can only see some of them, but we're going to take care of that very soon. So that is the box completed. Yeah, we don't really need to do anything else for this. Next up, we're going to create the player. So let's create a new scene. The player is going to be a character body 2D. We're going to rename this to be a player, save it inside of the scenes folder. We're going to create a script for this as well and save it in the scripts folder. But we'll get to this in just a second. Let's first create all of the nodes in the scene. So first of all, we're going to create a Sprite 2D and we're going to have multiple sprites. Actually, the first one is going to be the body. And then we're going to create one more, which is going to be the gun. So for the body, we're going to use the top down character .png. And we're going to scale it up by like, let's say three. And let's also give the gun its texture. And the gun will be scaled up because it's the child of the body. So it's fine. We don't need to do that ourselves. And that's looking good. Let's also create a collision shape. And the collision shape for the player. We can do a circle, but we can also do a capsule. Just going to fit nicely to the shape and we don't really need to worry about the hands. They can just like not collide with stuff. It's fine. Okay. So perfect. Do we need anything else? We're going to have more stuff obviously, but for now we can just have those. So let's go into the world. Let's create a player. Let's put it in the center. I'm also going to go into the project settings go into window settings. I want to make the window 1280 by 720, 16 by nine, I believe. Um, just cause I want to do that. Okay, let's play this. Let's take a look at how, how the player looks. I think the size is just fine. We can leave it as it is. So the next step is going to be making the player move and also make the player rotate towards the mouse because we want to be able to, for example, if I'm holding the mouse here and I want to be able to shoot this box and the player needs to turn towards the mouse so that it's aligned. Otherwise it's not going to make sense. So let's first take care of that because that's going to be very simple. 
we're simply going to create the process function, which is going to run each frame. And in this, we're going to use a function called look at. And we're going to look at the global mouse position. So there's also a function for that. So we're simply looking at the, the global position of the mouse. And that's going to look like this, which completely achieves what we want to do here. So we didn't have to do anything at all. We simply had to use um, the built-in functions Godot is providing. So it's always good when you can just rely on other people's work and you don't have to do it yourself. So feels good. Okay, so that's going to be the first step. The second step is going to be slightly more you know, work. We want to make the player move. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make him move by using the WASD keys, W and S, it's going to make it move up and down, A and D, left and right, very simple. To be able to do that, first of all, we need to detect those key presses. And to be able to do that, we're going to go into the project settings, into input map, and we're going to create some input actions. The first one will be move up, then move down, then move right, then move left. Let's also create one for shooting and also to quit the game. So quit the game is going to be escape. Shoot is going to be the left mouse button. And then moving up is going to be W, down is going to be S, right is going to be D and left is going to be A. You can also assign the arrow keys to these as well if you want to, but that's fine. Now we can use these in here and I'm going to make the player move in the physics process instead of the regular process because the, moving the player has to do with the physics engine. So we're going to do it here. And first of all, we need to detect which one of the keys we're pressing, W, A, S, and D. And to do that, we have a function called input. What was it? Get access. Yeah. And this is going to take in a negative action and a positive action. And if the negative action is pressed, it's going to return negative one. If the positive action is pressed, it's going to return positive one. And if neither or both are pressed, it's going to return zero. So we're going to use this function to determine which direction the player wants to go. So for the negative, we're going to say move left. And for the positive, we're going to say move right. And let's also print this to show you what it looks like. So by default, it's zero, as you can see. When I press A, it's negative one. When I press D, it's positive one. And when I press both, it's zero again. So we can simply take this value here and multiply it with the velocity that we want to use. So when move left is pressed, the velocity is going to be negative on the x axis. So we're going to move left. And when move right is pressed, it's going to be, we're going to multiply it by one this time. So it's going to be positive. So we're going to move right. So very simple. Hopefully that's making sense. And we're going to do this again for moving up and moving down. Up is going to be negative and down is going to be positive because up is actually in the y axis, it goes negative. Um, so that's, that's the reason for that. And I'm going to save these two values in a vector called move direction. So the x value of that vector is going to be the horizontal movement direction and the y value is going to be the vertical movement direction. Very simple. And then we're going to check if the move direction is not zero. So if it's not zero, then one of the keys are being pressed and we should move. But if it, it is zero, which is going to be this else statement here, we're going to make the player stop. And at the end of all of this, we're going to call move and slide to make the player actually move. But for this to work, we need to set the velocity. And we're going to do that here when one of the keys are being pressed. So we're going to say velocity equals speed 
which is a variable I'm going to create in just a second, times movement direction. Let's create speed up here. Let's set this to be something like, I don't know, 300. Okay, so that should be enough to make the player move. As you can see, by pressing W, A, S, and D, I'm able to move in all four, actually eight directions. But the problem is, when I let go, the player doesn't stop. So let's fix that. So to make the player stop, we're simply going to get the velocity dot x and we're going to set it to move toward velocity dot x zero delta. We're going to do the same for y. So simply switch velocity dot x with velocity dot y. And this is going to take in the current value of velocity dot x. It's going to interpolate it down to zero using delta. So if you want to learn how this works, you can hold down the control key, click on the function. That's going to take you to the description of the function. And then you can read this and learn more from, from it if you want to. You can also click this button to open it up in, in your web browser and potentially see more information, which is kind of cool. So with this, we should be able to stop now. Let's see. And in, indeed we can, oh, actually no, we can't. Why is that? Hmm. The reason is I messed up. This should have not been Delta. Let's see how this works again. Uh, delta. It says Delta here, but it should be a larger number actually. That's why it didn't work. I'm just gonna make the speed. Uh, that should be fine. So now we can stop, as you can see. And it seems like we're kind of moving faster diagonally when we have both, let's say, S and D held down. And I think that's because the movement direction is larger than zero in that case. So we can simply normalize it maybe. Ooh, let's say normalized. And that should take care of that. Okay, perfect. Now we have the player controller. Finally, I'm simply going to create a camera here so that we can actually see the different parts of the game. Just like that. Awesome. Okay, we're going to leave it here for this tutorial because it's getting kind of long and in the next one, we're going to continue. So make sure to click on the next video and keep watching it to finish up the project if that's what you want to do. Okay, bye.